Algebra 2 honor students. Today is going to be the start of a very exciting unit for us. Unit 12, day one, is all about the study of logarithms. And logarithms, the abbreviated form of that is we will lovingly call them logs throughout the unit. So when we talk about logs in general, why are logs critically important for our course? It's because logs are blank of exponentials. They are inverses of exponentials. We need an inverse operation to raising something to a, a power that has a variable in it. You know, if we have two to the X, we need an operation that undoes that X that's up in the exponent. We, we don't have anything right now. I mean, if we think about X squared, we can undo X squared with taking the square root. So we have the inverse operation of squaring something is square rooting something. The inverse op operation of multiplying is dividing. If we have adding, we have subtracting. Well, if we have raised something to the X power, we have to have a way to undo that. And that's what logs are all about. So in order to get us an idea about what logs start to kind of look like here, <clears throat> we're gonna make a quick table for the exponential function 10 to the X power. And if you remember from unit 11, 10 to the X is gonna be definitely exponential growth. And if you just pick three points real quick for X, like negative one, zero and positive one, 10 to the negative first is one tenth. 10 to the zero is one, and then 10 to the first is 10. So we know that a, a kind of a really quick sketch of what that would look like is we'd have a y-intercept of one. It's gonna get close to the line y equals zero and grow really fast on the positive side of the x-axis with that base of 10. So what I want you to remember is how do I take that information and think about what the inverse looks like? So what about f to the negative one of x? How can I make a table of values there? Well, for f to the negative one of x, we know that when we find an inverse that the x and y values, they switch. So we would get one tenth comma negative one, one zero, and then finally 10 one. So, okay, one zero, you know, that's pretty easy to plot. 10 one would be like way out there. And one tenth negative one, you have to go over a tenth and then down negative one. The main idea of this graph is gonna look something like this. There's my graph for the inverse. And as a reminder, graphically, when you're looking at a function and its inverse, it's a reflection of the line y equals x. So that's kind of a, a nice visual as well to say, yep, if I take this graph and I flip it over this line, we're gonna get this graph in red right here. So I wanna talk about a little bit more about what the equation for this inverse is algebraically. So algebraically, if you have y equals 10 to the x power, we know that to find an inverse, you're gonna switch the x and y value, so you get x equals 10 to the y. And then at this point, we have to introduce a really important concept of how do I solve for y? Y is a variable that's up in the exponent. And it takes on this function of how, what operation am I gonna do? You're gonna take what's called the log of both sides. And when I take the log of both sides, log is an operator like square root, like multiplying, like divide. It's an operation that's happening, okay? When I write log of both sides, I'm gonna write that it's log base 10. So logs have bases that we write as subscripts. And when you take the log base 10 of an exponential base with 10 in it, these undo one another. So operationally, what I'm writing right now will just leave me with Y on this side and we'll become very accustomed to that in this unit. So it turns out that the inverse is log base 10 of x. So you can write f to the negative one of x as log base 10 of x, or actually more commonly, because base 10 is the number system that we work in, you'll see that log base 10 of x is known as a common log. So more commonly, it would just be written as log of x. If you see log x written anywhere, it is definitely talking about a base 10 for your log. We can have many, many, many other bases within our logs, but log, just log X all by itself is definitely talking about log base 10. Okay, what I wanna do is I wanna compare and contrast some properties of Y equals 10 to the X up above versus Y equals log of X. So we have Y equals 10 to the X, and then we have Y equals log of X on this side. All right, let's talk about some of the properties, first of all, 10 to the x that we should be pretty familiar with. We can list the domain and range of 10 to the x. The domain is all real, so you can plug in whatever you want. But the range is 
zero to infinity, we got that horizontal asymptote. Speaking of horizontal asymptote, it's located at y equals zero. Is an exponential function of this form one to one? Does it pass the vertical and horizontal line test? The answer is yes. We know that anything of the form 10 to the x, or really b to the x, has a y-intercept at 0, 1. And the x-intercept, well, because of the fact that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, there is no x-intercept for y equals 10 to the x. Okay. To compare and contrast what happens with y equals log of x, which we know is its inverse of 10 to the x, for log of x, if we look back up at the graph and talk about the domain and the range there, domain and range. Well, let's see. The domain is not quite all real numbers. It's it's kind of bound by the y-axis now. So it's, it's certainly from 0 to infinity, but we don't want to include 0. Now, as far as the range goes, this part of the graph is going down forever. And then I'll tell you, this is very slow growth, but it will go up forever. It's going to take a while, but the range is all real numbers. Think about why that makes a lot of sense graphically compared to what I have over here. Oh, yeah. Inverses, X and Y get switched. So the range became the domain. The domain became the range. Does the graph of log of X have an asymptote? Turns out it has a vertical asymptote now at X equals zero. So, yeah, this boundary on the Y axis, there's my vertical asymptote right there. Our functions of the form log x one to one. Yeah, I mean, if it's one to one, that means that the inverse is a function. And since this is the inverse right here, this one is also a one to one function because the inverse of a log function gets me back to an exponential. All right, if I think about the y intercept, well, because of the vertical asymptote, it does not cross the y axis. And then the x intercept was at one, comma, zero. Which makes sense, of course, because if you switch 0, 1, it becomes 1, 0, which is a point on the x-axis. So this is kind of all just kind of good critical information to know about some graphical relationships, some things about domains and ranges. And we'll extend these concepts a lot further as we go throughout Unit 12. Okay? So we'll see a lot more with graphing and domains and ranges and things of that nature. What I want to introduce to you now is a pretty important relationship between exponential form and log form. So we have these two different forms. We're going to talk about that exponential form. Versus log form. And converting back and forth between those two formats. Okay. So when you have something in exponential form, I think this will look pretty familiar to you. That exponential form is a base raised to an exponent. All right, we have some base raised to an exponential there. That equals some number n. And what I want to do is I want to think about, okay, if here's my exponential form, where do those things go when I translate them over into a log form? Okay, where does the, you know, the y, the 10, and the x go when I transfer it over to what we call log form? Well, the base of the exponential is going to wind up matching the base of your log. And that base is written as a subscript kind of like what we did for sequence notation, okay? It's written down here. So log base B of this number, capital N, equals the exponent. This is what it would look like if I converted into log form. So what we want to do is we want to practice converting back and forth between these two forms. So notice how in log form, the log answer to a log is an exponent. It's the exponent to which we raise this base in order to get that number. So look at where these numbers are currently. If these are all numbers, how that transfers into log form, we're going to get some practice converting back and forth between these two formats. So the first type of converting that we'll do is let's convert to log form first. And I think you'll catch on once we do a couple examples here. So for example, if I gave you 2 cubed equals 8, oh, that makes sense. 2 to the third power is in fact 8. What would that look like in log form? Remember, this is a base to an exponent equals a number. I want to get it to look like log base b of the number equals the exponent. Okay. And by the way, sometimes it's helpful to remember that this is ben form. Exponential is ben. This is benny. So we're going from ben, which is exponential, to benny, which is log form. 
So that's going to be log base 2. Base of the exponential becomes the base of the log. Of the number 8 equals 3. And again, the interpretation here is that 3 is the exponent to which we raise that base 2 in order to get 8. So we're just converting from one form over to the other. All right, here's another example. If I give you 5 to the negative second power, what is 5 to the negative second? Well, it's 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 25th. All right, if we know an exponential form, 5 to the negative second is 1 25th. Therefore, we know that log base 5, okay, base of the exponential, base of the log, of the number 1 25th equals the exponent negative 2. And that's pretty much it, right? I mean, let's just do one more that has a bunch of variables to see if you know where they go. Okay, a to the b equals c. If you have something of this exponential form, it would be log base a of the number c equals the exponent b, because a to the b power equals c. So even if there's a bunch of variables thrown in there, we want to make sure that we know where they go when I write something in log form. Well, let's go the other direction. Convert from log to exponential form. All right, so if I start with log base 4 of 64 is equal to 3. Right now I'm in Benny form, right? I'm over here. I want to get to Ben. I want to kind of work backwards. So when I convert to exponential form, it would be the base of the log becomes the base of the exponential. This is the exponent that I'm going to raise that base to in order to get the number 64. And the nice thing about converting to exponential form is you can think about whether or not this statement makes sense. Is 4 cubed 64? Yes. If you had reversed it by accident and put 3 to the 4th, 3 to the 4th would have been 81, so that we know is incorrect. So going in this direction, it's a little bit easier to almost like check our thought process because we know what exponential form, what this is going to um, equal here. So log base 1 half of 16 is equal to negative 4. Okay, so what would that look like in exponential form? It would be base 1 half raised to this exponent, negative 4, and that that equals 16. That sounds like it's all checking out to me. Yeah, 1 half to the negative 4th is the same as 2 to the positive 4th, which is in fact 16. All right, I'm going to go a little crazy on here. Log base 35 of stick figure equals star. What? What are all those crazy symbols? Well, it turns out it really doesn't matter, right? So I just want to make sure that no matter what the log expression looks like, the log equation here, can we write that in exponential form? Well, apparently, this makes sense, 35 to the star equals stick figure. That's about as artistic as I get, guys, all right? so. I know that's a little silly of an example here, but just making sure that we can convert from log form over to exponential. And we're going to get a little bit more practice with that in a section of today's notes called evaluate. Okay. So when you're evaluating, here's an example. We're going to evaluate what is log base 7 of 49 equal. So I'm giving you what that log form looks like to start, but I'm just not telling you what, what's on this side. And maybe you already know the answer in your head. Because remember, this side is the exponent to which we raise this base in order to get the number on the inside. So you kind of have two options here of how you can evaluate and figure out what this answer is. Here's option one. Option one is to make like bases. So what I mean by that is let's make this log base 7 of, if you can change 49 into something with a base 7 there, that's gonna really benefit us. And I'm hoping you're thinking that, okay, 49 is seven squared. Because if the base of the log and the base of the exponential match each other, the answer is just that exponent. Okay, when the base of the log and the base of an exponential term match, the answer here is just two. Which maybe you knew that already, right? Seven to some power equals 49, that, that power is 42. So what is option two then? Option two is to create an equation. So you're gonna set your expression equal to x, convert and solve. So in the same example, what would that look like? I would say, all right, well, I know log base 7 of 49 equals some number x. And then we would convert it to exponential form and solve. 
So in exponential form, think about what we were just doing up here a second ago, it would say seven to some power X equals 49. And therefore 49 is, oh, that's seven squared. So you still need that uh, um, operation of common bases from the last unit to get that X equals two. So we get the same answer no matter what option we choose. If we can easily do option one, I'm gonna recommend that route. It's not always easy though to change the number here to match that base automatically. And we'll see why that's the case in some future examples here. Okay, so let's take a look at some more practice with evaluating. All right, so the next example we'll take a look at is log base four of 1 64th. Okay, so if we think about our two options, can I make this into some sort of base four exponential? And the answer is, yeah, it's not so bad. If you know that, 64 is four cubed like that. You would change that to one over four cubed. Well, what we have to do is we have to make this term on the inside be something with base four. Right now it's one over four cubed. Well, that's the same thing as four to the negative third power. If you rewrite this in negative exponent form. So once I have the base of the log and the base of the exponent match, the answer is the exponent negative three. If you weren't thrilled about that method, well then the other choice is set it equal to X. You're gonna write four to the X equals 1 64th. And then you still have to make common bases no matter what. So one case, you're just making the common base on the inside of the parentheses. Here, it's just in the context of solving an equation. But they're really the same process each time. This is four to the negative third and then X equals negative three. All right, so either option works. Whichever one path you, looks cleaner to you, that's the path I'll encourage you to choose. All right, taking a look at another example, if I said log base two of eight radical two equals what? Two to what power equals eight radical two? Well, this is one where we might consider um, going ahead and making an exponential equation out of it. So I'll set this equal to X, and we're gonna say that two to the X equals eight radical two. So it would look like an exponential form. All right, I wanna make a common base here. So if I leave this side as two to the X, can I express this whole thing as two to some power? And the answer is yes, it's a little bit of a weird case, but I know eight is definitely two cubed. And I know radical two is two to the one half power. So if you remember the rule, when I multiply two things at the same base, what do I do with those exponents? We're gonna wind up adding them together. So we get two to the X equals two to the, well, three plus a half is 3.5. So if you wanna write it as 3.5 or if you wanna write it as the fraction seven halves, that would be okay. But as soon as you get to this point, we know that X equals 3.5 or seven halves. So therefore, if I go back to the beginning, log base two of eight radical two is in fact 3.5, okay? So if I do two to the 3.5 power, that is equivalent to what's on the inside there, eight radical two. But I think the exponential case here of making those common bases, it's probably an easier route, okay? If I said, what's log base five of five to the three X plus two power? All right, in this case, I want you to be a little bit cautious because remember when the base of the log and the base of an exponential match, the answer is whatever is in the exponent. The answer to this is just 3x plus 2. But I'm going to do a quick word of caution. If you set equal to x, don't be tempted to solve. So for example, if I said, oh, 5 to uh, the x equals 5 to the 3x plus 2, you would get that 3x plus 2 equals x you get this equation that you're gonna wind up solving and it's not gonna lead you to a correct answer. So when you have variables that are up in that exponent, you have to be a little bit cautious about setting it equal to X, that method that we just chose here, because then you're gonna solve an equation. And these aren't really equations, we're making it into an equation to make the evaluating easier for us. But at the end of the day, you never have to make this into an equation if you follow option one, right? So that's gonna be something we just, Kind of pay a little bit of attention to as we do more evaluating this unit, but let's do one more. The last one we're going to do is log base X of 1 over 81 equals negative 2. 
All right, for something like this, you'll notice for the first time that this is the first time we don't know what the base is. So if we're thinking about, all right, what am I gonna make this into to match that base? It's not gonna be an easy conversion there, right? This is actually an equation that we're gonna solve. We already know it equals negative two on this side, so let's convert it to exponential form. In exponential form, it would be base of x to the negative two equals one over 81. So convert from log to exponential. And then the key here is think back to what we did in unit 11, raise each side to the reciprocal power. Reciprocal of negative two is negative a half. All right, so then this side becomes x. If you don't like a fraction to a negative, flip the fraction over on the inside, make it a positive. Oh yeah, and 81 to the one half is square root of 81, better known as nine. So log base nine, if that was the base here of one over 81, would equal negative two in that case. Yep, that makes sense. Nine to the negative second power is in fact one over 81. So logs are so critical in so many other areas of mathematics that I hope we have a good solid foundation to start on day one, converting between the two forms that we learned about. So much more great stuff to come in unit 12. Let me know if you have any questions next time I see you. Have a good day.